فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له من يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد ورين الشرح في كتاب تعظيم العلم written by شيخ صالح بن عبد الله بن حمد العصيمي رحمه الله We stopped at where the author said قال ابن القيم رحمه الله في كتابه الفوائد إذا طلع نجم الهمة في ظلام في ظلام ليل 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 البطالة ورد وردفه قمر العزيمة أشرقت أرض القرب قلب بنور ربها The author رحمه الله says in this book of his كتاب الفوائد which ابن القيم what he wrote this book for was to combine and to compile in this book benefits. And the book truly is a beneficial book. And Ibn Qayyim says, إِذَا طَلَعَ نَجْبُ الْهِمَّةِ فِي ظَلَامِ لَيْلَةِ الْبَطَالَةِ If the star of, if the star rises on the aspiration in a dark night, meaning if a person, he wasn't aspired, he had never had aspiration, and then the star of aspiration came to him then what it would be like is and then the conviction the smooth of conviction came with it then it would be like a land which was dark before in which the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has now made it clear for a person to see so what he's trying to say is that the stars is aspiration and that the moon is the conviction. If those two come to a land, then the land becomes bright. It is something, you, a land you can see. And this is, it's got a lot of balagha in the Arabic language in it. So he's trying to say that the heart is like that. If a person comes with aspiration, and remember the, the chapter was called جَمْعُ هِمَّةِ النَّفْسِ عَلَيْهِ To bring your aspiration together. And to, let, uh, and to leave off this concept of dividing and splitting your intentions. To place all your, your drive in one thing. If you want to embark on becoming a person who achieves the world, then go for that. If you want to be a student of knowledge, you have to give your heart and your mind and everything you own in, to this. Knowledge doesn't allow shirk. It doesn't allow you to associate partners with it. It wants you to do it alone. Then the author, Rahimahullah, he brings a powerful statement after that. He says, وَمَنْ تَعَلَّقَتْ هِمَّتُهُ بِمَطْعَمٍ أَوْ مَلْبَسٍ أَوْ مَأْكَلٍ أَوْ مَشْرَبٍ لَمْ يَشَمَّ رَائِحَةَ الْعِلْمِ Anyone who, who connects his aspiration and drive to what? بِمَطْعَمٍ food. This person, his aspiration is food. Or malbasin or clothes to wear. Or ma'kalin or food to eat. Or mashrabin or something to drink. He lives for that. This individual, if you see him, his life is only about food. It's only about what to wear or what to eat or what to drink. <coughs> this individual, لَمْ يَشَمَّ رَائِحَةَ الْعِلْمِ You're not going to smell the fragrance of knowledge. Let alone attain knowledge. Let alone gain knowledge. You're not going to what? You're not even going to smell it. If your drive is food, and that's what you want, and it's about clothes, and how your, your appearance looks, then what you need to know is that لَمْ يَشَمَّ رَائِحَةَ الْعِلْمِ You're not going to taste the sweetness of knowledge. Knowledge is a fragrance, it's a fragrance, it's a smell. You're not going to get that fragrance, that's not for you. The reason is because what you've done is, you've done shirk in your seeking of knowledge. You've associated it with other things. Knowledge doesn't allow associated partners with it. A statement which I really liked, 
But the author didn't mention, but I find it very powerful, is a qawl written by Ibn al-Hajj al-Jazairi. Ibn al-Hajj al-Jazairi, he said a very powerful statement. He said, in a line of poetry, he said, Al-Ju'u yutradu bil-raghif al-yabisi fa'ala ma taqtu hasarati wa wasawisi Hunger can be removed, it can be repelled. You can get rid of hunger with a dry bread. فَعَلَى مَا تَكْثُرُ حَسَرَاتِ وَوَسَاوِسِ So why are you really stressed about? And what is it that's making you become very worried and concerned? You can really get rid of what? I'll give you an example, two people. One person goes out and he buys a expensive, he goes to Central London Piccadilly Circus. He goes to a restaurant where to even enter this restaurant. I remember one time me and a cousin of mine went to Piccadilly Circus. We got very hungry so we ended up going to a little restaurant. They wouldn't even let us go in just because of how we looked. So there's, a, there's, a, a, there's an appearance that you have to have in order to even enter the restaurant. So, you guys have seen that, right? There is, you have to have a, a particular appearance in order for you to what? For you to be even able to enter it, let alone then when the price. So I was wondering if I, had to, if I have to be wearing a very expensive clothes to enter this place, because you're gonna bring them bad customers in. Are you with me? Then I'll, I'm, uh, it's worrying what the menu price is going to be, right? But if I just went home, took a dry bread, butter jam, drank it with water, would that fill me up? So what, that man who ate and I were both full. Rather, I might be better, I might be eating healthy food. Well, Idalika brothers, a rich man saw a poor man eating bread. He saw him eating food that wasn't expensive, very cheap. Rich man who could buy, who can weigh this poor man on a weighing scale. However much weight he is, he can give him of gold. How rich he is. He saw a poor man eating and he became jealous of this poor man. Because of the health Allah gave him subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is able to eat this food which he's due to his health he can't eat. This rich man can never buy the, the, the health that this poor man has. A rich man who envies and is jealous of a poor man. And it's from the blessings of Allah that you, you don't yet understand that you have right now with you as an individual, healthy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to you. So this food and hunger that we're all running around, we're trying to get make money, if you really think about it, the, the gist of it is that it's a hunger you can really remove. A dry bread can really remove this hunger. And water. But what when require, we're, we're demanding as students of knowledge is we, and that's what a student of knowledge should stick to. The Salaf, that's what they were like. They really didn't go far and high as to what? Eat flavored food. Our Messenger والسلام, Aisha said, كان يمر هلال وهلال وهلال لا يوقد في بيت رسول الله نارا عائشة عروة بن زبير her nephew it would go by season and another season and another season may go by عروة and our house there won't be no fire lit so he asked her he said how are you how did you guys live then what did you live on and she said the two blacks referring to water and dates. And this is in Babi Taghlib in the Arabic language. It's called what? Babu Taghlib. Because the date is black, the water ain't black. But one overcomes the other one in name. So they call it just like Abu Bakr and Umar, they call him not. Umarain. Umar's name overcomes the other, the other name. Sah. What's the mother and the father called? Umm and Ab, right? Abawain. This is called in Arabic Babu. Babu Taghlib. It's called Babu Taghlib. So here, so here, the Prophet will live on what? What would he live on? The Prophet وسلم, would live on the, a date and water. That's who? Khayru Khalqillahi, the best man who ever placed his foot on the face of this earth today. He lived on this. But he died at the day of judgment. Uh, this, uh, the, the Prophet ﷺ told us that Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, Amma. 
think it's hadith, it's not hadith al Qudsi. That the person would say, Yaqul ibn Adam, Mali, Mali, Mali. The person will say, My wealth, my wealth, my wealth. And it will be then said to him, Wahallaka ya ibn Adam, or the children of Adam, is it for you? Min malika illa ma akalta fa afnait. What wealth do you own except that which you ate? and you destroyed, you used it. Or that which you wore, and you, when you wore it, it wore out. Or you gave it in charity, you gave it out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and now you've got it ready for you the day of judgment. That's all your wealth is, is food you ate, it's gone. You took it to the toilet. Or clothes that you bought, it was brown new, when you first bought it, you loved it. A month or two on the line, you start wanting the other one that's out there. And the, or the third, which is a sadaqah which you gave, which the day of judgment you will wait for. Inshallah, Allah is going to give you. Allah is going to give you reward for it. So anybody who connects as a student of knowledge, who makes his ultimate goal while seeking knowledge, he wants to have a fancy watch. He wants to look very good. The dunya means something to him. And this person, لم يشم رائحة العلم. He's not going to smell the fragrance of knowledge. You know food before you eat it, when your wife's cooking, or your mother's cooking, what happens? You smell it first, right? You smell the food, food first. That's a muqaddima, it's an introduction. Then after that you eat it. Knowledge is like that, it has a fragrance. You are going to be prevented from the fragrance, let alone the what? Let alone the eating. You're not going to be able to smell it. You're mahroom. هذا عبد هذا عبد محروم. You're going to be prevented from it. It's because you're you, you were seeking knowledge and you're trying to attain knowledge with a heart that has in it مطعم أو ملبس أو مأكل. You want to eat. You want to. The student of knowledge, my brothers and sisters, is he's an individual who seeks knowledge so long that his food becomes cold and gets warmed up for him. And then he keeps reading and then gets warmed up again. And he keeps reading and he gets warmed up again. That's how he lives his life. Or he even forgets to eat and he remembers at night, why, am I, why do I feel pain? I never ate today, subhanAllah. Oh, let me eat. So that's how a student of knowledge is like. That has to be reminded. When he's like, oh. And Imam Nawi, his sister, his sister, she used to break the food for him. And pay attention to this. Even the eating that we eat, we want to we wanna spend time. You know, we want to wash our hands, we want to put our hands long. We want to say, okay, let me, let me place the food properly. He takes the plate, he puts everything in line, you know, he chats. He wants to really enjoy the meal that he's going to have, right? For them, it was, what was the fastest possible way in which this food can go into my system? So his sister would take it, she'll break it into small pieces, and she'll give it to Nawi. And he'll take a water and he'll drink it straight away, straight away. He doesn't like the idea of enjoying it. Well, Ibn Aqil, it was narrated from him. He said that the time I hated the most was the time I had to eat. It was the worst time for me. The time that he hated the most was what? The time he had to eat. Ibn Aqil, the Sharih of uh, Al Fiyat ibn Malik, he has a Sharh on it. Then the author, Rahimahullah, he brought a statement, he put, put a line of poetry. وَعَلَمْ بِأَنَّ الْعِلْمَ لَيْسَ يَنَالُهُ مَنْ هَمُّهُ فِي مَطْعَمٍ أَوْ مَلْبَسٍ فَحْرِسْ لِتَبْلُغَ فِي حَظًّا وَافِرًا وَهْجُرْ لَهُ طِيبَ الْمَنَامِ وَغَلِّسِي The author said, وَعْلَمْ نَوْ بِأَنَّ الْعِلْمَ لَيْسَ يَنَالُهُ Know that no one will attain knowledge. This line of poetry is attributed to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali said this. وَعْلَمْ نَوْ أَنَّ الْعِلْمَ knowledge لَيْسَ يَنَالُهُ No one will attain it. مَنْ هَمُّهُ فِي مَطْعَمٍ the person whose aspiration is in food, O Malbasin, or it's in clothing, Fahris, strive. Litablugafi Havan Wafiran, strive. 
to attain a high level in it, in knowledge. Wahajur lahu. I'm due to knowledge boycott. Tiba al manami. The joy and the sweetness of sleep. Get rid of that. Wagalisi and leave in the morning. Early morning. What, what, what time is Ghalas? Salatul Fajr. When it just, the sky is just becoming bright. Six o'clock, yeah? Five o'clock. Come out for class. Wagalisi. Ya ikhwa brothers, anybody who wants to learn and attain knowledge, if he's not awake after Fajr and if he's not studying, and he should really question himself if he's a student of knowledge. If he's a what? If he's a true student of knowledge. And Imam al-Sha'bi, they asked him one time, they came up to him and they said to him, min ayna, min ayna al -ilm? Where have you attained all of this knowledge from? And Imam al-Sha'bi. And he responded by saying, بِنَفْيِ الْإِعْتِمَادِ I left, off I left off depending on anyone or anything. I depended on, and I didn't depend on myself, I depended on Allah. That's one. The next is, وَالسَّيْرُ فِي الْبِلَادِ And traveling the land. Anywhere I would learn knowledge and I will attain knowledge, I travel to it. Whether it's the east, the west, the north, or the south, I would even leave my comfort, my house, and go to another country to attain knowledge. The Sayyidu fil Bilad is very powerful. It's the one thing that makes people leave really when you see the serious student of knowledge. Ya Ikhwa, trying to learn in the comfort of your house, doesn't work. Even in your neighborhood, in your area, doesn't work. You should go out, travel, take, cut a distance. We said it yesterday that if you give knowledge, if you give knowledge everything which you have, knowledge will feel sorry for you, will give you something in return. But it will never give you everything. That's after you gave what? That's after you've given it everything you had. And the third he mentioned is وصبر, كصبر الحمار. I became patient. And I showed patience, like the patience of the donkey. The donkey is used, he's abused. Some countries in the world, when you go and you look at the donkey, you'll see that people make a hole in his back. They take a knife, they make a hole in his back. It's bleeding slightly. They take a stick whenever they want it to do work properly and they poke it from that injured part of his body and it works. It works. And that is dhulm, oppression of this animal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالظُّلْمُ ظُلُمَاتِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Oppression is the darkness is from the darkness, it's a darkness from the darkness of the day of judgment. But look at the donkey, it's very patient. It works, works, works. It's the strongest, one of the strongest animals. People move with it. They place everything on it. He said, I showed patience like the donkey. And that's what knowledge needs from you. When you're studying it, it needs patience. You need to show patience. If you don't, you're not going to attain it. Knowledge is going to try to break you. But you should let and take it from it. And the last one he mentioned was وَبُكُورْ كَبُكُورِ الْغُرَابِ And also leaving in the early morning, just like the crow does. So leaving in the morning is another way to show that you've gained knowledge. That's why, and this with all this is why he attained knowledge. He realized why he did. Bukhur, leaving in the morning when everyone else is running to their dunya purposes. Your ham is knowledge, not mat'amin or malbasin. Oh mashallah. And as a student of knowledge, you're going to sometimes feel humiliated. Sometimes you're going to feel low. But that's just a part of knowledge. Just remember one day, insha'Allah ta'ala, that you're going to get out of this. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, taliban matluban. I was humiliated. 
when I was a student of knowledge and now that I've attained knowledge I'm honorable when you're seeking knowledge you go to a person you say teach me he'll say to you I'm not going to teach you please teach me Akhi. Wallah I'm not going to teach you you beg him you humiliate yourself humble yourself you beg him he looks at you and says okay come to me tomorrow at 12 o'clock midnight you're like okay you feel bad, you feel low, you feel used. But that's what knowledge is. You just don't care right now. Right now for you is to learn. Ibn Abbas said, I would tie my face, I would sit in front of the house of a companion or somebody, I'll travel to him. The sand and the dust would come and it would cover me. This is the Prophet's cousin. He met the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. The Prophet is now dead. He could just say, you know, I'm, I'm already in a good... I met the Prophet. But what he does is that he goes to another companion after the Prophet's death. And he wants to attain more knowledge, more. It's not enough for him. But then what happened to Ibn Abbas later? That hard work and the effort of his, what did it, come, what did it bring about? He became Ibn Abbas. That's what he became. That today you look at a book of tafsir, you look at a book of hadith, he's one of those people who his aqwal is mu'tamada, is relied upon, sah? All of that came with what? As he said, I was humiliated, belittled, looked down at as a person seeking knowledge. And then when I attained it, I became somebody respected. Then the author said, وَمِمَّا يُعْلِي الْهِمَّةَ وَيَسْمُ بِالنَّفْسِ اِعْتِبَارِ أَمَا اِعْتِبَارَ حَالَ مَنْ سَبَقَ وَتَعَرُّفَ هِمَمَ الْقَوْمِ الْمَاضِينَ one of the things that increases is aspiration. وَيَسْمُ بِهِ النَّفْسِ And a person's soul and nafs becomes high. Yeah? You can if you can, if you can read, inshallah. The author says here, وَإِنَّ مِمَّا يُعْلِي الْهِمَّةِ One of the things that increases in aspiration. Yeah? Huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. ربما أراد الخروج قبل الفجر إلى حلق الشيوخ فتأخذ أمه بثيابه وتقول رحمة به حتى يؤذن حتى يؤذن الناس أو يصبحوا. The author رحمه الله he says here وإن مما يعلي الهمة وإن مما يعلي الهمة one of the things that increases in aspiration and makes the person's nafs go high shoot up is اعتبار حال من سبق is taking into consideration the situation of the one who precedes those who came before you studying and learning the biography of the pious predecessors this is one of the things that increases your aspirations and learning and studying the aspiration of the previous generation how their aspiration was ولذلك the poet he said اقرأوا التاريخ إذ فيه العبر ضل قوم ليس يدرون الخبر the poet he said اقرأوا التاريخ read history اقرأوا التاريخ read history إذ فيه العبر because in it is what عبر means lessons is lessons to take from history Ballaqawmun, misguided is a people. Laysa yadrun al khabar, who don't know the news, the information's in it. They're misguided. Walidarik al tariqu yu'idu nafsaha, as they say. History repeats itself, right? History what? It repeats itself. So what took place is going to happen again, it keeps. That's what's happening. If you read history, it's like you're looking at the world through a very thin veil. 
It's not that you know the unseen. It's because you read. And the ulama they say that the alim يعرف الفتنة قبل وقوعها. He knows the fitna before it takes place. The alim, the scholar, he tells the people, be careful. Oh people, be careful. This is this path which you guys are taking. This road in which you guys are treading on is going to bring about destruction and torment. Be careful. Then it happens. The people still don't realize it now that they're in it. They only realize it once it's gone. The am and the jahal and the general mass, they only know an issue and a problem after they what? After it's turned its back, after it went, it went and it's gone. That's when they wake up and they say, look, subhanAllah, we were in fitna. That's when they, that's when they wake up and they realize. As for the ulama, they recognize it from very far. Now the author then gives you examples of the history, the biographies of those who preceded us. So you can now take from this something that's going to increase you in aspiration. He says, for Abu Abdullah Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Who? Abu Abdullah is his kunya. His name is Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Hanbal. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Kana wa huwa fi siba. Whilst he was a child, he was very young. Ahmad ibn Hanbal was a young boy. Young boy. Rubbama arad al khuruja, he would want to leave. Qabl al fajri. To the gatherings of the scholars. Young boy, Al Imam Ahmed want to leave, wants to leave before Fajr. Before Fajr. He wants to leave and he wants to go to a circle. In that circle, what they are teaching knowledge. He wants to sit there and he wants to benefit. He's pushing himself. Our, our youngsters, what? All night they were on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, eh? Call of Duty playing. The mother's fighting to wake him up for Fajr. She's telling him, I have to pray. He's, after, as soon as she leaves, he puts himself. Some of them, every day, somehow they've got wudu. Yeah. What do you have wudu? Yeah, I have it, alhamdulillah. He wakes up for bed, he, ha he has wudu. He jumps to prayer. He goes back to bed straight away. And some people take it very lightly when it comes to the issue of praying the salah without tahara. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, Umira bi rajulin an yudrab mi'ata jaldah. A man, a slave, was commanded to be lashed a hundred lashes in his grave. One lash can fill his grave with fire. So the slave, he begs Allah, Oh Allah, lessen it for me. Oh Allah, a hundred is too much. So he gets taken to one. Fayudrabu, then he will be lashed at one lash. فَتَمْلَأُ قَبْرُهُ نَارًا His qabr becomes filled with fire just from one lash. And then when he gets lashed, he asks, فَعَلَى مَا جَلَتْتُمُونِ Why did you lash me for? What was it the reason I did? And then they tell him, you prayed a salah بِغَيْرِ طَهُورَ بِغَيْرِ طَهَارَ You prayed a salah without what? You prayed a salah without a tahara. Adabul qabr comes from it. Praying a salah without a tahara deliberately is adab al-qabr. You get punished in your grave. So our youngsters, that's what they're up to. كَانَ وَهُوَ فِي الصِّبَعَ Imam Ahmed, when he was young, a childhood. رُبَّمَا أَرَادَ الْخُرُوجَ He would want to leave قبل الفجر before Salat al-Fajr. إِلَى حِلَقِ الشُّيُوخِ And he would want to go to the circles. Hilak is a circle. That's where he would want to go. فَتَأْخُذُ أُمُّهُ His mother would take him. She will cook. بِثِيَابِ She will grab him by the clo his clothes. He wants to leave, she grabs him. She grabs him by his clothing. وَتَقُولُ رَحْمَةً بِهِ And she says to him, out of mercy, this is a mother. Moms are always worried. Is he going to get stabbed? Is he going to get hit? Is he going to get robbed? Is something going to happen to him? Mothers always worried, sir. Parents are always worried. His mom, what happened? She will say to him, Until the adhan is made and it becomes morning, don't leave, it's too dark right now. 
stay, let it become a bit dark, let, let, let it become white, let it become daytime, let the adhan go off, stay a little bit, don't go, right now it's, too, it's dark, it's midnight, if anything can happen to you, somebody might do something to you. So this is how they were, now. صحيح البخاري صحيح البخاري كله على إسماعيل الحيري في ثلاثة مجالس اثنان منهما في ليلتين من وقت صلاة المغرب إلى صلاة الفجر واليوم الثالث من ضحوة, ضحوة النهار إلى صلاة المغرب ومن المغرب إلى طلوع الفجر نادي أوثر رحمه الله he brings another example he brings a another example and this is الإمام Khatib al-Baghdadi rahimahullah Al-Imam Khatib al-Baghdadi rahimahullah rahmatan wasi'ah He read Wa qara'a al-Khatib Khatib al-Baghdadi read And Imam al-Khatib al-Baghdadi is from the ulama of Qarn al-Khamis He was the 5th century and he died the year 436 He died the same year as Al-Imam ibn Abdul Barr He they both died the same year and Imam Ibn Abdul Barr was known as Hafid al Maghrib, and Imam Khatib al Baghdadi was known as Hafid al Mashriq. They both, they both lived at the same time and they died at the same year. Waqara al Khatib, this type of recitation is called Qira'atul Jard. It's known as what? Qira'atul Jard. Qira'atul Jard means what? We go. We read Sahih al-Bukhari all in one night. All of it. Bi asanidiha with its chains, with the medicine, everything. We read it. It's called Qira'atul Jard. It's fast recitation. And you read it in a group. The reason is because that type of recitation, it flows. It what? <coughs> because when you try to read it alone, sometimes you may become tired and sleepy. And it's got a lot of benefits, Qira'atil Jardi. Some people say, what's the benefit if you're not memorizing it? What benefit does it bring about? It does. You familiarize yourself with Asanid and Riwayat. You also learn that this hadith is in this particular book. Whenever you come across it, you'll remember, oh, I read it one time here. It's also got that benefit. There's a book written by Jamaluddin Al-Qasimi called Qawa'id Al-Tahdith. Jamaluddin Al-Qasimi has a book called Qawa'id Al-Tahdith. In that book, he brings so much examples of scholars who have come with what is this type of doing. Are you with me, brothers? He brings examples of Ibn Hajar, Sakhawi talking about his teacher, Ibn Hajar. How he read Musannaf ibn Abi Shaybah, Musannaf Abdul Razak, and Musnad al Tayalisi, and Musnad Imam Ahmed in nights, a couple of nights. With their Asarid and their Riwayat. This is called Qira'atul Jard. The aspiration was high. So here he says, وَقَرَأَ الْخَطِيبُ خَطِيبُ الْبَغْدَادِي You read Sahih al-Bukhari Sahih al-Bukhari He read Sahih al-Bukhari كُلَّهُ All of it. On who? عَلَى إِسْمَعِيلَ الْحِيرِيِّ He read on Ismail al-Hiri. And Ismail al-Hiri, رحمه الله, pay attention here. This is what's powerful. A student, okay, we can understand if he wants to read Sahih al-Bukhari in one night or two nights. It's understandable. He's a student. He's the one looking for something. He has aspiration, right? But Ismail al-Hiri was old. Plus he lost, he, he was blind. Kuffa basaruhu, he lost his eyesight. And he would be in that, sitting with Khatib al-Baghdadi, and they would read together. And he was a hafid, hafid, memorized it, itqan. So would correct him if he says it wrong. <coughs> one of the benefits that he has, one of the benefits that he has, this kind of qira'a, qira'atul jard, is also that the person would learn how to pronounce names properly of the ruwat and the narrators. The teacher would correct him. So he read all of Sahih al-Bukhari, all of it. Ala Ismail al-Hayri on fi thalathati majalis, in three sets. See, three different sets. إثنان منها في ليلتين. Two of those was one night. 
ithnani minha fi laylatayn sorry two nights so two sits were in two different nights from what min waqti salati al-maghribi ila salati al-fajri from fajr sorry from maghrib to fajr from salat al-maghrib they sat down and they read until to fajr wal yawm al-thalith the third night was what the third day was what so two two nights that's how they did it two nights they did it from maghrib to Fajr, Maghrib to Fajr. And then the third one was Min Dahwatin Nahari ila Salat al Maghrib. From Salat al Duha until Salat al Maghrib. Wa min al Maghribi ila Tulu al Fajr. And then from Maghrib to Fajr. That was the third sit. Some scholars they try to weaken the story, such as Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr al Shiliyu in his Kitab al Mashri al Rawi. He mentions this story incorrectly. And he mentions that Khatib al-Baghdadi read it in five days. And what is correct is that Khatib al-Baghdadi, he read Bukhari twice. One was the one he read to Ismail al-Hili, which took three sits, which is the one we just mentioned. Another one was he read it on Karima al Maruziyah, this woman. Karima al Maruziyah. He read on her five days of Hajj. He read on her. She was a hafidah, mutqina of Ilm al Hadith. She had ijazat al Riwayat of Sahih al Bukhari. So. He also read on her five days of Hajj. She would listen to her. Karima was her name, Al Marwaziyah. That's the correct way to say it, Al Marwaziyah. Karima Al Marwaziyah. Some people now may say this is impossible. How can this be done? Is this even realistic? <coughs> Ibn Tulun, Rahimahullah, who's from the Ulama of Qarn al Ashir, the fifth, ten, the tenth century. What he did was, some people started to question, can this even be possible? And can somebody even do this? So, as it's mentioned, and he he mentions.